Dear Gapa Squad friends, Quebecers and Canadians, fellow international protesters, the Maple Spring in Quebec might be over, but the recently elected government has not fulfilled its promises to cancel the tuition hikes. After a month of protests and more than 130 consecutive nightly demonstrations in 2012, students were back in the streets of Montreal in February and again on March 5th. During that evening, the Montreal police, called the SPVM, has used a large number of stun grenades. This is no surprise, the SPVM seems particularly fond of this crowd dispersal device, which has become infamous since the explosion that blew off the eye of a student, Francis Garnier, last spring. It is still difficult to shed light on this event, which has not been the object of a proper independent inquiry yet. The SPVM has started using this weapon after the 2008 North Montreal riot, itself triggered by the murder of Freddy Villanueva, a young man shot at point-blank by a police officer. Inspired by common practices in Russia and Israel, worldwide democracy leaders and guardians of human rights, the SPVM have felt the need to expand the arsenal it uses against protesters. The rubber blast grenade, or RBBG, is described by its manufacturer as a sub-lethal weapon of dispersion. Consider the following explosion. In fact, you'll notice two explosions. The first one ejects the fuzzy assembly from the grenade itself. The main component keeps flying for half a second before the main blast which produces 175 decibels massive deflagration and liberates 26 grams of chemical CS powder. Such an explosion, produced by 8 grams of contained flash powder, can cause injuries like this one. The sound pressure level is also critical at 175 decibels from a 5 feet distance, falling into the hearing loss category of risk, knowing that 140 decibels is considered the threshold of pain and that the sound pressure level doubles for each additional 6 decibels, you do not want one of these RBBGs exploding near your head. In March 2012, in response to the controversy surrounding the injury of Francis Garnier, the SPVM proceeded with a public relations operation. Before unpacking their weapons to the mass media, the chief inspector Alain Boudagé stated that the rubber blast grenade is used to limit injuries, with special emphasis on the fact that the base of the grenade is made of rubber. These images do not show, however, another part of the grenade, the fuse assembly. During the evening of the protest of March 5, 2013, following the explosion of an RBBG, a GAPA squad member retrieved one of these. It seems the SPVM has willingly tried to hide this object from the media, we understand why. Forget the rubber part. This is hard metal and hard plastic. It is obvious how extremely dangerous this can be if it is ejected at high speed near anyone's head. Gapa has accumulated evidence of close proximity explosions from the March 5 event. A team of field journalists from La Presse, a Montreal corporate daily newspaper, had to denounce this violence. Gapa has also been informed that some protesters were injured in these explosions. After the release of our French language video, Alain Boudagé stated one year, day for day, after his first presentation of the RBBG, that the police are constantly trained to use this device. 
Imagine a person in heavy armor, tired and stressed. Nobody is infallible, and do not forget everything that is thrown at them. Gappa learned from reliable sources that the safe use of these grenades should never involve an explosion less than seven or eight feet above the crowd. These safety rules are clearly not observed. The RBBG's manufacturer, Defense Technology, states that this product may cause serious injury or death to you or others. Following a similar event at an Occupy Oakland 2011 demo, attention has been brought upon Oakland's police force crowd control policy. This document states that distraction devices or stun grenades should be launched at a safe distance from the crowd to avoid unnecessary injuries. Oakland's shocking event was reported worldwide. To this day, no corporate media has clearly denounced the SPVM's brutality against peaceful Montreal protesters. This leaves us wondering, if this grenade is so dangerous, why is it being used so often and aggressively by Montreal police against its rightful citizens? Furthermore, why is this considered acceptable policing in a supposedly democratic country? Wouldn't this kind of police behavior seem outrageous if it happened in a foreign dictatorship? GAPA Watch. Report. Resist.